Yes, indeed. It is the final Monday in November of 2022. It's November the 28th, and we only got five weeks left in 2022. And this Monday starts off on a great note. Wild game between the Browns and the Buccaneers, and the Browns followed the script early, got that first touchdown as they often do, followed the script in the middle, offense kind of scuffled in the middle of the game. But change the script late. They came through when it mattered, both on offense, defense, and special teams late. Yes, indeed. Brown's win will get to all of it. Coming up next in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. Podcast is not for the faint of heart. And I do think it's time for the Browns to move on. It's not for those who ride the fence. He's proven nothing. But if you're looking for someone who tells it like it is about Cleveland sports. Everybody does fandom their way. You've come to the right place. I don't think he's any good. It's time for the bullpen with Adam the Bull. Final score in overtime. The Browns defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 23-17. A long pass from Amari Cooper, excuse me, from Jacoby Brissett in his final, what hopefully will be his final start as a Browns quarterback, to Amari Cooper, sets it up, and Nick Chubb punches it in for the game-winning touchdown, and that is the final. But how did they get there? We'll get to all of it. Uh, throughout the day here in the podcast. Uh, again, the final 23-17. We hope the Browns could go 6-5 and five, uh, leading up to the six games with Deshaun Watson. We, 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 I think many of us thought they'd go 5-6. and six. In the end, they fell one game short of that, 4-7. and seven. Uh, Is that good enough? Probably not. The Browns had a 2.5% chance of making the playoffs before the week began. Even though they won, I don't know that their chances of making the playoffs have improved any because all the teams ahead of them, except for uh, the Ravens, everybody everybody else that's in the playoffs currently, Chiefs, Dolphins, uh, Bills, Titans. uh, No, the Titans lost also, sorry. But but, uh, so the Titans and Ravens lost, but the Bills, the Bengals, the Jets, the three wildcard teams right now all won. So did the Dolphins and the Chiefs. Browns don't have a lot of tiebreakers. Let's face it, in terms of the season, the Browns are going to have to go 6-0 and with Deshaun Watson to even have a chance. And if they do that, they still might not make the playoffs. But that's not what it's about right now. Right now, it's about a great win, which we'll spend a lot of time on. And it's about sometime today, Deshaun Watson suspension officially coming to an end. He has uh, was reported uh, over the weekend that he passed all the did all the things he had to do for his uh, suspension to come to an end. And and um, in six days, we will see Deshaun Watson in a regular season game for the first time in almost two calendar years and for the first time, period, as a Cleveland Brown. But for today, for, for now, let's get into the victory. It's a great win for the Browns to improve to 4-7 and seven on the season. Yes, that's not the record you want. But uh, one week at a time, let's see how it goes. And uh, yesterday, an excellent victory. The Browns played... Uh, very well on the defensive side of the ball, something we have not seen often. And they played pretty well on the offensive side of the ball. The offense ends up scoring 23, not bad. It took overtime. The offense did not look good in the middle of the game, which has uh, been the case lately. But uh, they did come through late when it mattered. They scored in their first two drives in this game. They were up uh, 7-0 and 10-7 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, as has been the case quite often, they sc- scored on their scripted drive, their first drive uh, starting the game. Their second drive stalled out. They did settle for a field goal. They missed another field goal later. No excuse. I mean, Cade York's got to be better. Frankly, you drafted him in the fourth round. He obviously made the big kick against Carolina. He did make a 50-plus yard field goal in this one. But overall, he's not been great. And he's missed some. And, and the look on his face after he missed that chip shot, basically extra point kick was like he was panicked. And that's not good. I don't feel great about him right now. I don't totally trust him. He's got he's got a big leg, but he's had some kicks to have you scratching your head. But despite that, the game was 10-10 at the half. Now, the Buccaneers did take a 17-10 lead in the third quarter, and neither team really got go- anything going offensively after that. How And, and it wasn't looking great for the Browns. They um, When they got the ball uh, in the fourth quarter, 
Let's go to the fourth quarter where they um, – where am I here? Am I play by play? All right, so in the fourth quarter, you know, the Browns were not moving the ball. Um, they got the ball and had an opportunity late in the game to potentially – Well, you know what? I'm going to switch. I had it on, on one website. It's a little hard to read it here, so I'm switching over. So, anyway, the Browns um, – in their second to last drive of regulation, they decide to go for it on fourth down near uh, midfield. So I want to get to that. Uh, no, that's the first half. Uh, touchdown made it seventeen seventeen. I'm sorry, the third to last possession they had in the second half. So with. Um, they got the ball with 12.33 to go in the fourth quarter. Down 17-10. They hadn't really done anything so far in the second half. The Browns, before this drive, in their first three drives of the second half, three plays zero yards, five plays 23 yards, three plays negative seven yards. So in their first three drives of the second half, they did not move the ball at all. They had 16 yards on, on 11 plays. It was ugly. They kept They kept doing a good job on defense, though, right? They kept stopping the Buccaneers, who after their initial touchdown drive, stop playing a stupid ad. After that uh, initial touchdown drive, they played pretty well defensively. So the Browns get it back, first and 10 at their own 20. They move the ball to midfield. They end up getting pushed back with a penalty. And then they go for it on fourth and nine at the Tampa Bay 44. Probably a lot of people scratching their heads with 826 to go. The offense hadn't been moving the ball that well, and the defense had, and I think it was one of those situations where Kevin Stefanski said, listen, we're in Tampa Bay territory. It's not a field goal opportunity here. It's a 61-yard kick. Um, Let's go for it, and our defense is playing great today. We can stop Tampa Bay, and I'm going to get into why I think the Browns played great defense yesterday, whether they've got things fixed or, or maybe why you shouldn't be surprised that they did play well defensively. So it's fourth and nine at Tampa Bay 44. I'm sure a lot of people are screaming they should punt. I hate punting. in the. I, I would never punt in the opposition's territory, uh, or almost never. There are some circumstances I would, but it's almost never, and this is not one of them. I would not have punted here. I think Kevin Stefanski did the right thing going for it. I know fourth and nine is not an overly likely first down, but your defense is playing well. You're in Tampa Bay territory, and Jacoby Brissett made a perfect throw to Amari Cooper, who dropped it. He was wide open. He dropped it. It would have been an easy first down. And at that point, I don't blame Browns fans if they're saying, you know what? Here we go. That was our op. That's always that one big play in every game that we screw up and we lose the game. And it looked like that was going to happen again. Uh, But Tampa Bay, a quick three and out, only used a minute 28 off the clock. Browns got the ball back, unfortunately, because they had the only negative of them going for it was that even when the Buccaneers punted, it buried the Browns. So they had a first down at their own five, got it with just under seven minutes to go. Now, on this drive, they they used a lot of time. They used over four minutes on the clock and barely moved the ball. They got from their own five to their own 23. Now, Bjorquez, who hasn't been great, actually had a great punt here. He, he, they had to punt fourth and 20. You can't go for it there. You're on 23. You're down seven. You have, you have to punt in that situation, even with 241 to go. So it's the right move by Stefanski again. So Bjorquez, who's not been great, it's an excellent punt, goes into the end zone. So the Buccaneers get it first and 10, still up seven points with 235 to go. Now, if they get a couple of first downs, the game's going to be over. The Browns have time, three timeouts, but there's only – uh, two. The, the drive started at, at two forty one, or two thirty five. So the Buccaneers run on first down. They stop them. Three yard loss. Great play. They really stay, outside of one big Rashad White run. I think he had like a forty yard run in the first quarter. He really completely shut them down the rest of the game. Second down. And this is where the Browns get a break. So they they take their first time out at two thirty to go. Then on second and thirteen. The Buccaneers throw the ball. It's incomplete. Clock stops 2.30, and it's third and 13. Brady goes – Brady now is going to pass again. He gets sacked. Great play by Miles Garrett. We need the big guys to step up, the stars to step up and make big plays. Miles Garrett gets the big arm out, 
trips up Brady, gets him down. It's fourth and 20. Browns call a timeout. So you had to punt from your own 20-something yard line with just with less than three minutes to go. Your odds of being in great shape, the odds of getting the ball back aren't great, let alone get it back in great shape. And the Browns got the ball back with 2.20 to go. Um and one timeout still plus the two-minute warning. So that was a huge break for the Browns that the Buccaneers ended up attempting to throw two times, and were it was an incomplete in a sack. So you only had to use two timeouts. So the Browns get it back. They get really good field position at the Tampa Bay 46 to start the drive. 17-17 game, uh, just over two minutes to go. Browns in a situation where in these spots – they have failed time and time again. We'll talk about what happened, and we'll talk about what happened in overtime. Just a sec, I want to, I want to uh, let you know that today's podcast is uh, brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. All right, so let's, let's just get to the rest of regulation, then we'll get to overtime. So Nick Chubb gets the ball um, in the, the first two plays of that final drive. So the first three plays of that final drive, he goes to Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb goes for six, then a big run. So that takes you down to the two minute warning. So now you have the Tampa Bay forty. Then one of the th- one of the huge, you know, one of the two huge plays of that drive, obviously, including the touchdown. So Nick Chubb runs for twenty eight yards, and you get a first down at the twelve. But obviously, you need a touchdown, not a field goal. So you still got to get in the end zone. So they run again with 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 Chubb for the twelve. It doesn't go anywhere. Jacoby tries to throw it to, to Hunt on a screen pass. That's incomplete. Third down and nine, another screen pass to Njoku. It loses a yard. So this is it. The game is on the line. There's about 30-something se- se- seconds left. It's fourth down and 10 at the 12. So you can get a first down at the two. Uh, there, there's enough time, and the Browns, I think, still had one timeout left, if I remember correctly. Uh, so there was enough time if you got a first down, but obviously you're looking for the end zone. And then one of the all-time plays in a regular season for the Browns. Jacoby Brissett makes a high throw back of the end zone, and David Njoku, had, who had been unproductive, had was not having much of a day in terms of catching passes. I don't know what he was doing in terms of blocking. I'm not you know grading out his blocks every play. Made a fantastic catch, kind of one-armed, pulls it in. It was not an easy play. Jacoby Brissett in the postgame was honest. He said, Hey, I thought I was about to cry. I thought I uh, I thought I threw it too high. It was high. It was a tough throw, but it was a great play by Najoku. So that makes it 17-16 with 32 seconds left, right? I think it was 32 seconds. So now a decision needs to be made. Do you go for two to win, or do you kick the extra point to try to get it to overtime, knowing that there's still enough time Tom Brady potentially can get a, a field goal try? Now, my theory in that situation, when you're a team with kind of nothing to lose and a bad record, and you're down one point in the final minute, I would go for two. We saw two other teams go for two in that situation yesterday. Both of those teams won. The Browns did not go for two. I'm not going to kill Stefanski for that. I love when he's a gambling man. This time, he, he kind of went against the gambling man mentality, which was a little surprising. I would have gone for two there. He didn't. Fine. It worked. That's okay. It's not it, that to me. It's a. It's kind of a toss up. But he goes, kicks the extra point, makes it seventeen seventeen. Buccaneers uh, throw a hail mary at the end of regulation. After it looked like they they actually made an, it was a nice completion of Julio Jones uh, that got it to the to the Browns forty eight yard line with still fifteen seconds. They had one play to kind of get into field goal range. They couldn't incomplete pass to Cameron Brait, and then eventually the uh, the. Um, the Hail Mary falls. It goes to overtime. We'll get to that next right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. Folks, I got to talk to you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net, your number one source for spe- sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. Ah. 
Okay. Overtime. Gets exciting. We're doing the we're doing the two minute show on Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show two two minute show on um, on YouTube. Buccaneers win the toss. People are panicking. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. But you know he needs a touchdown to win the game. Even a field goal, the Browns would have had a chance. It was a long drive from Tampa. It was eight plays, but only took two and a half minutes. Uh, the the Buccaneers had a third and four at the Browns' 47-yard line with eight minutes to go. And they complete a 10-yard pass to Rashad White that would have put them right on the on the fringe of field goal range and a big penalty on Tampa, illegal use of the hand. So instead of a first down at the Browns' 37, it becomes a third and 14 at the Tampa Bay's 43, incomplete pass. They have to punt. Browns get it, don't do anything with it. In fact, they lose eight yards, three and out, quick punt. Right back to Tampa now. It's to the point where any points, next points wins. Tampa starts at their own 19. They get to their their 39-yard line, and then the big the big play, Miles Garrett gets the – you know what? I said uh, – my, ba- my bad. I, I said that uh, this was the – I said at the end of the Buccaneers' last drive – or second to last drive of regulation was when Miles Garrett got the ankle sack. That was the sack that he combined with Clowney. The ankle sack was in overtime on the third and nine play where Miles Garrett trips up a Brady to get the sack and forces the punt. Big time play. Miles Garrett made two big big time plays in this game. So the Browns get it back with another opportunity. And uh Jacoby Brissett really made it happen on this drive. Um Nick Chubb had had four carries on this drive, and he ultimately scored the touchdown, but he didn't really gain much yardage. The two big plays on this drive, Amari Cooper had the big drop earlier, gets the drive started off right. They start from their own 29, decent field position, and a completion to Amari Cooper this is a big play to start this second overtime drive. A, he makes a great catch in traffic, good throw by Brissett, great catch in traffic. Then he breaks a tackle, and instead of being like a six, seven-yard gain, it ends up being a 17-yard gain. You hit the two-minute warning of overtime, and the Browns are in great spot, first and 10 at their own 46. But obviously, with Cade York missing a field goal earlier, chip shot, and the look on his face, you're not feeling great about a field goal. You want six, but obviously you'll kick the field goal if you, if you have to. Yep, Nick Chubb gets four yards. Nick Chubb gets two yards. Not great, but but okay. It sets you up in a decent third situ- third down situation. Third and four at the Tampa Bay 48. This was the game. 56 seconds left. Jacoby Brissett goes deep to Amari Cooper. The defender, I can't remember who it was, falls down. Slips. Cooper's wide open. Makes a great catch, gets pushed out of bounds at the three-yard line for a 45-yard gain. So, timeout, 48 seconds to go, first and goal at the three-yard line. Brown's trying to win it. You're not, you don't want to kick the field goal, but obviously you don't have a ton of time. So, Nick Chubb up the middle, first down, nothing. Brick wall, stop, timeout, 24 seconds left, and then... Second down play, they run it again. This time, they bring in the extra blocker. And uh, Nick Chubb, again, goes to the to behind Wyatt Teller, actually, and gets into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown run. And the Browns, with a great win in front of the home crowd, it was a big one. And, you know, this was a game that you like, that I'm sure a lot of people throughout the game were like, oh, here we go again. They find another way to lose. Well, this time... The Browns found a way to win, and it was very exciting. 23-17 to is the final. The Browns still a long way from the playoffs. Again, it's it's a remote chance. They've lost six of eight conference games. Uh, They really don't have any tiebreakers except for against the Bengals. So, listen, don't hold your breath for any playoffs, but now we finally get to see the guy that... The Browns gave up a ton of capital for. Deshaun Watson is coming back, and he's playing in Houston. We'll look ahead a little bit to that game. We'll look back to 11 weeks of Jacoby Brissett. Some more final thoughts on the game uh, as we come back next, right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. (laughs) 
I don't know what it is. I don't know if you folks have the same experience I do. Sometimes you drink water and it's like, eh, water. And sometimes you drink water and it's like, ah, oh, water. Usually that's when you're really hot, which I'm not. You know, it's cold out. Got some heat on, but I'm not that hot. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the water, you know. Anyway, so, uh, okay, so looking back at Jacoby Brissett, way, he did way, way better than I thought. He has a chance to compete for a starting job, I think, for somebody else next year. He seems to have been a great teammate, had some really funny things to say after the game. Uh, he dropped uh, the F word uh, about beating Brady. He's, you know how cool it was to, to beat Tom Brady. As a guy who, you know, obviously was a rookie player with Tom Brady, loves Tom Brady, and uh, that was great. Um, kudos to him. He really played way better than any of any of us could have expected. But Deshaun Watson is the man you gave up a ton for, and off the field stuff aside, he is a significantly better player than Jacoby Brissett, and it's going to open up what the Browns could do offensively. It's going to also make it easier for them to run the ball. Nick Trubb. Nick Chubb grinded out 116 yards on 26 carries today. But teams have been stuffing the box, daring Jacoby Brissett to beat them, and you can't do that the same way against Deshaun Watson. Now, he may be rusty. He may not look great right away. We'll see. The crowds are going to be crazy. He's playing in Houston his first game. They're an awful football team. They're the worst football team in the league. Uh, so I expect the Browns, even if Watson's rusty, to go out there and kick ass next week and get to 5-7. and seven. That's what I'm... That's my anticipation. Uh, we'll see if it actually happens. A uh, couple other kudos. Uh, well, I, I I'll be I, I just can't wait to see Deshaun Watson play. I know some people that's going to make angry. We've talked about this so many times. I'm not going to talk about the off the field stuff anymore. What's there to say that hasn't been said? If you're mad that I'm excited about seeing him play, that's you. You have every right to be mad at me if you want. I can live with that. Uh, but I am excited to see him play. I'm not going to be a phony about it. Some kudos on the Browns. First of all, again, as we talked about, Jacoby Brissett. Uh, I didn't even think he played a great game. It's funny. He's had a lot of games this year where he's played really well, and in the big moments, he fold, he folded. This game was the opposite. He overall didn't play great, but in the big moments, he came through. End of regulation, in overtime, he made some huge plays. A couple of big throws to Cooper, both drives. The touchdown throw to Njoku. Um, and then a actually a couple of plays to Cooper in the, in the, in the overtime. So great job out of him. Anthony Schwartz. We had an Anthony Schwartz siding. He had one catch for 17 yards. It was a big play. And then the uh, double reverse or the reverse to uh, Schwartz 31-yard touchdown run. Good for him. We make fun of him all the time, so give him a little kudos for getting it done. Not much of a game for Donovan Peoples-Jones, who obviously has played well. Amari Cooper had a terrible drop on that fourth down play, but overall played a really good game, seven for 94. And major kudos to the defense. JOK was a big factor today. He had a hit in the backfield, made a lot of tackles. The secondary played great. I mean, they really, you know, um, Chris Godwin had a nice game. He had 110 yards, but it was on 12 receptions. I mean, he's usually a big play guy. Mike Evans did nothing in this game, two for 31. Uh, they threw to, to White out of the backfield, but for the most part, the cor I thought the corners did a great job. Rashad White had a 35-yard run early in the game. The rest of the game, he was 13 for 29. I mean, they, outside of that one run, they did really nothing on the ground. They really didn't. The two backs, White and Vaughn, combined 18 for 79. And that's if you take out the 135-yard run, it's 17 for 44. I mean, they, it's like three yards of carry besides that one play. So the Browns did an excellent job defensively. Uh, Grant, I thought Grant Delpit played well. Uh, you know, obviously, Miles Garrett had one and a half sacks in this game. Clowney played a role. Martin Emerson continues to shine at his cornerback spot. Uh, nobody really got burned today. It was just, it was just a really, a really, really good performance all around by the Browns. Um, good return game. Donovan Peoples Jones didn't have a very productive, um, offensive game and he's been very productive of late he, he wasn't uh yesterday but overall he's been very productive but uh he did have a good return day um he had five punt returns for 75 yards including a 29 yard return 
uh, 15 yards per return. Jerome Ford had a 44-yard kickoff return in this game. The only And Bjork has had one of his better games. Cade York missing that chip shot field goal is one of the few negatives of this game. I mean, there's not much bad I can say. I just thought it was an excellent all-around performance. Everybody gets the thumbs up pretty much. And to keep it going against a, te- a really bad Texans team um, next week. All right. Uh, thanks for joining me as always. Make sure you join me and all the rest of the guys in the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. This this morning at 11 a.m. We'll be live. Tim Couch will join us at 1130. Um, uh, by the way, I wanted to say one more thing. That uh, great Saturday for me, even though the Buckeyes lost, and I'll talk about that for a minute. The Buckeyes obviously were terrible. The second half was awful. They had a, it was a pitiful performance in the second half. Kudos to Michigan. You know, last year we made the excuses about the weather. I know I did. This year was perfect weather, and, and Michigan was without – I know Ohio State had some injuries. I don't want to hear about that. Michigan was without their, their top two running backs, including one of the best running backs in the country. He barely played, and they kicked their ass. They were the better team. It's that simple. Better coached. They played better. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Michigan deserves the kudos. But I had a great day, you know, besides the loss there. We went to uh, Jay's house for uh, for the game. Great hospitality from he and his wife. Uh, so we had a fantastic time hanging there. Uh, uh, Mike Polk was there. Uh, Anthony was there from the show. And Jason Lloyd, his family. It was great. Great time. Brought my son. We had a great time. And then last night, Leroy Horde invited me and, and G. Bush out for dinner. And we thought it was just going to be the three of us with him, but no, Bernie Bernie, Bernie Kozar was with us um, for dinner, and Bernie was, just, you know, I love Bernie, uh, but I've never been out, you know, hung out. I, I've, I've talked with him a lot of times in studio, radio show, TV show, at you know, a couple other things, but but never at the, just a dinner. And Bernie was awesome. He saw the fans; just everybody talks to him. And he's just so nice with everybody. Bernie's the best. Uh, Jason Duffner, the PGA uh, golfer, obviously a very great player who's originally from Cleveland. Uh, he was He's friends with Leroy. I didn't know that. They, they're good friends. And he was out for dinner with us. And, and uh, so it was great meeting him. He was awesome. Eric Metcalf stopped by at the end of the night. So it was good to see him again. And there was some other guys. Bernie brought a couple of friends and and. Jason Duffner brought a couple of friends, and um, everybody was great. It was a really great time. We went to Johnny's downtown. It was I'd never been there before. Had an outstanding steak. Fantastic. Great appetizers. Great atmosphere. Anyway, uh, more on that, more on everything. Uh, Browns, Buckeyes. We'll talk about the Cavs as well. Maybe not today or tomorrow. A little bit more, um, including the game against the Bucks that they had that awful third quarter on Friday night. Uh, so we'll get to all that. Make sure you subscribe. And and like the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, you'll get alerts on the show. You get alerts on the, my podcast. Become a member if you can. Four ninety nine a month. There's a one ninety nine tier, but really the four ninety nine tier is the way to go. You get the bonus content for less than sixty dollars a year. Bonus audio uh, video content, which is great. We do at least five minutes, if not ten minutes, every show or almost every show of bonus content. Check out the uh, Locked On Browns podcast as well with G. Bush and Jeff Lloyd. Check out my cameo, Adam the Bull, the website, adamthebull.com, and on Twitter, of course, at Adam the Bull. There you go. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Where else but right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. See ya.